Hello friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. So in today's video, we're gonna be bringing it back old school style a little bit and we're gonna be doing some fun vinyl crafts together but with a twist. So I'm gonna be spilling the tea, spilling the beans on my best sellers when I was selling vinyl products. And so we're gonna be recreating those products today. I'm gonna to share what my best sellers were, maybe some products that sold really well, products that made the most profit, and then we'll kind of discuss maybe what's not worth your time. If you're new to this channel, you know that we do lots of fun crafts here we do vinyl sublimation laser cut items I just really enjoy doing all the things all the crafts and I've taken some time even throughout learning these crafts maybe I should sell these products so I have experience selling a lot of different things as well but vinyl is kind of like the OG and what I really got started with well sewing was kind of the first thing and vinyl machine was my first big purchase to kind of go along with my sewing shop i thought maybe i could personalize and make some different htv shirts and different things so that's really kind of what boomed my business and took off and what really got me started and um i don't sell vinyl products anymore but I still craft all the time with vinyl. I absolutely love vinyl products and vinyl crafts. And so that is why I want to share that with y'all today and spill the beans on some of those products. I think that maybe you can learn a lot from this video if you're looking for an inexpensive, um, way to start a business. I think I started my vinyl business for less than $800. I know this was like six years ago, but still a very low cost for everything you'll need to start a business. And it made me a lot of money in return. So maybe you're looking for a, a business idea or you're looking for just a way to make a little extra side money regardless. Um, I think it'll be fun to do this video today and kind of take me through memory lane and some products that I used to sell that would do very well. And I still tell people to this day, the people that are curious on I want to start a business, but I don't really like know what to get. Vinyl's dead, so I don't want to do vinyl. But y'all, vinyl is not dead. Vinyl business can be a very lucrative business if you know what you're doing and you have the right products to make and sell with it. Um, so that's what we're gonna get into today. And you might also wonder, well, Sally, if it's so great, why are you not selling vinyl products anymore? Well, that answer can be answered because when you're in a business and you're starting a business and you are learning and growing throughout your business, you might find different things that you enjoy more than others. And so you kind of have to go through things to get to really truly where you're meant to be in the end. And I found that throughout vinyl, and I would not have found my love for laser cut items and woodworking items if I would not have gotten a vinyl machine. Because it started with the vinyl machine, I made decals and all kinds of personalized items. And then I started learning that I can make stencils and wood signs with vinyl. And so it got me into wood signs. And then I learned, oh my gosh, what can I do to make these wood signs even better? And they got me researching lasers. And then I got a laser and I realized, hey, I really love making laser cut wood signs because I had the vinyl machine. So it all has got to start somewhere, you guys. And so um, that is what we're going to be doing in today's video. We're going to be taking a trip through memory lane. We're going to be making some vinyl products. And I'm going to be sharing some tips and tricks and crafts with you guys. So let's buckle up and get ready, y'all, and do some fun vinyl crafts together. And I'm excited. So let's get into it. So before we start talking about the different products and going into all that, I wanted to mention you're going to want all the colors and all the things. This isn't even all the colors I have. Um, variety is so important when you have a vinyl business because you might have some products already up there and you're like, why am I not getting sales or what's wrong? Um, customers want variety. They're coming to Etsy and they're coming to your website for um, personalization. They want to kind of cater to the colors that they like and they want. So offer all the different colors. Um, definitely all the rainbow colors as well as some of the trendy popular colors too. And I definitely noticed throughout my time of selling that people prefer matte over uh, gloss just in my experience and the things that I sold. So I definitely transferred everything kind of over to the matte option. So um, for adhesive vinyl, Starcraft HD and Oracle 651 are are both really good brands to get when it comes to vinyl and those two brands did very well for my vinyl business um, but those are some things I wanted to mention so as well as all of these colors you're also gonna want to stock up on some really cute pattern vinyls those always did really well for me as well and some of the cute uh, holographic vinyls whoops the holographic vinyls are very popular and this was always one of my best sellers was anything with holographic vinyl um, but just remember that it doesn't stick that well to the transfer tape so you'll have to offer a little bit of extra instructions if you're selling decals with this but definitely definitely stock up on all the colors and all the things so as you guys can see we're doing some rearranging in my craft room we brought the heat presses and all of my blanks into this room originally 
all of my stuff was in another room. And so I was going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth all the time when I was heat pressing items and different things. So it's nice to have everything all in one space now. So along with popular decals and things like that, we'll get into that in a minute. Something I noticed that made me like a really good profit margin was drinkware. So this might be a given. You might be like, well, yeah, that's, that's, you know, obviously that made good money, but I'm telling you guys, if you pro, if you, um, do your research and you figure out what's trendy and you make some really cute cups, these sell very well. And there was months that I was making thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars off of just drinkware. So drinkware did really well. I started originally with just these, um, clear tumblers and um, this is the Mars brand I get them all at save a cup it's a great place to get blank cups um, but these are really good quality cups so I would just have these and I would let the customer pick all out of all the vinyl colors and give them an option for a font and they would just kind of put the name on it and I would put a little bow like for decoration these sold very well and I started noticing that people wanted to order multiple so they wanted like for their bridesmaids or parties um, kid cups all the things so I started expanding by doing bulk orders and those did very very well um, I would even add like the name with bridesmaid or the name with um, bride or I almost said wife but um, yeah you would just put things like that on there and they sold so well and then I started doing these matte black tumblers with the holographic vinyl on them I couldn't keep these on the shelf you guys I had to constantly reorder them um, and they did really well these were definitely a hot seller also so um, don't sleep on drinkware, you guys. I think any time that you sell drinkware, you can do really well with it because people love to buy custom cups. Right now, it's the Stanley cups. <laughs> so, um, but these were really popular um, when I was doing vinyl, and I still to this day see them all over Etsy, and I think people do really well with them. So, sell the drinkware. Offer all the colors and take good product photos and these will sell well. So let's go ahead and make one of the matte black with the holographic just for old time's sake. And um, it'd be really fun. And I kind of want to do one of these. Oh, and by the way, the vinyl on these cups, they last there. I still have cups from like six plus years ago that are still really good quality on the cup. You just don't put it in the dishwasher. Um, so if you varnish it really well, let it cure for at least 24 hours in your home before you ship it to your customer, you'll have a cup that lasts many, many, many years. So let's make one of these babies. All right, so we have our name ready for our cup. Um, what you're gonna wanna do first is obviously measure your cup from the top of the rim to the bottom just to see how long it can be. And I always make it a max of three inches wide. So the name is 2.6 by seven. Um, so that's what works for that cup. So I made the name, it's ready. We don't have to do anything else to it except for cut it. It is ready on the software. You guys, I'm ashamed of myself. I haven't cleaned my vinyl mats in so long. So nothing's sticking anymore. So I need to plan to do that. But for now, we're gonna pull out the trusty, du trusty dusty. Is that a word? We're gonna pull out the handy dandy tape and we're gonna tape um, our vinyl down. So a little tip for applying vinyl to cups is to get some kind of, I usually use these little paint containers and I'll put them on both sides of the tumbler just to keep it straight. But the first thing that you're going to want to do is get some kind of rubbing alcohol or an alcohol swab and you're going to want to clean your surface really well. This is really important because your vinyl needs a clean surface to stick to. Something about that alcohol does it. So you just need to clean your surface really well and allow it to dry before you apply your decal. So we have our holographic vinyl ready to apply. It has got transfer tape on top of it. So I'm just going to remove that. So when it comes to applying vinyl on top of tumblers like this, um, I don't use a squeegee. I just use my fingers and rub it along all the letters and that honestly works better than using a squeegee.
And that's that. These were super popular. And look how pretty and eye-catching that vinyl is. You guys should see it out in the sun. It just reflects everything. It is just so beautiful. And I can see why it sold really well. But it doesn't take long. It takes just a few minutes to make. And you can pretty much triple, quadruple your profits on these. So you might be curious, can you make a lot of money selling vinyl products? And yes, you can, but you can also make a lot of money selling any product that you're selling. Um, it just depends on how much effort and how much work you're putting into the products you're making. Are you doing the research to ensure that customers are actively searching for those products? Are you following trends? Are you making sure that your photos stand out and you have good SEO, which is search engine optimization, titles, tags, descriptions, keywords. It's a lot of work that goes into products. So yes, you can make a lot of money selling vinyl products. You can make a lot of money selling, I don't know, stained glass windows. I don't know, whatever you sell, as long as you're working hard at it and you're putting the work into it, you can do it. Um, and yes, vinyl can be a good business to get into because like I said, it's really versatile and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So another product that sold really well for me was popsicle koozies. So I know you're probably like, oh, that's so simple and you know, whatever. But honestly, y'all, they sold really well and I would market them a lot around holidays like Easter and then summertime, of course, but um, Christmas for stocking stuffers. Like these sold really well all around the year. I would sell a lot of these and you could do deals like buy some, get some free kind of things and they're so lightweight so they would ship really cheap and then um they were cheap to make so i got these on amazon and i'll link the ones that i got down below but i would always get like the big packs that have the different colors um and then just update my stock on there but these sold really well and you can get all kinds of shapes like you can get little sharks and stuff and dinosaurs and all kinds of things um but all you need is some htv and these and there you have a little product that you can sell and you can get creative. Like I would do bubble wands, like the Walmart ones that you can get in the big packs. I would sell those and personalize those and you can gear them as like party favors. So like I said, you're guaranteed to get more than one product. If I could suggest anything to you guys, find a way to make it to where you're selling more than one product. Um, and that's really how you'll make a lot of money doing vinyl. Yes, you can make money selling decals, but when you're making items that are like bulk, that's really where you can make your money with vinyl. But yeah, let's go ahead and customize a popsicle koozie. All right, so in our software, we have our name ready. And now this is going to be cut in HTV, just regular white HTV. So we want to mirror it and we want to make sure that it is set to HTV. Now for our popsicle koozies, we measured from the top of here to the bottom of here. And we know that five inches is the longest we can go. And so we went ahead and inputted that in and then the length um, or the height is 0 0.872. So this one is gonna fit nice onto our popsicle koozie and this one's ready to go. So when you're cutting anything with HTV, you wanna have the shiny side down for regular HTV. So we're just gonna put that down on our mat where our software says it needs to be. All right, so now we're gonna do our HTV popsicle koozie. So you're gonna wanna set your heat press to the recommended settings of your HTV. So in my case, it is 305 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're gonna place our weeded design <clears throat> sticky side down. Center it up on your popsicle koozie. And then I'm going to press it for about 10 seconds. Another thing that worked really well for me was I would throw in some freebies in the packages of customers um, to kind of like gain exposure to some other products that we had. Those did really well. So for example, let's say a bride ordered a bunch of bridesmaids tumblers for me. I would throw in maybe a decal that had something wedding related, like a Mr. and Mrs. decal that she could put on some mugs or, or something along the lines of that. And that did really well because it gained exposure to those other products that I offered. So a lot of times people would come back or even message me wanting more of something. Um, so that's something I would definitely like capitalize on a little bit if you're selling vinyl products is freebies. And along with that, like holidays and different things, I would put like 
peep decals in there for Easter and around Christmas I would do little Christmas trees or cute little things that I would offer for free. Um, so it means a lot to the customer. It makes them feel really special that you wanna, you know wanted to give them a little bit of extra something. And then around the end there, I was starting to experiment with stickers, which is another great thing to sell if you have a vinyl machine. And um, people would reach out to me wanting more stickers so there you can get more sales. Okay, so the next one that I really honestly suggest if you're gonna be making vinyl decals, you can make money doing personalized things like just names, right? But you're really gonna make the most profit when you're making it to where they're buying more than one. So anytime I would have like a set of something, those are what sold really well for me. So the top sellers were usually pantry labels. So I would make like, you know, the ones that say rice and flour and snacks and crackers, whatever else, but you let them customize what you want it to say. Those sold like crazy. So pantry labels, bridesmaids, decals, anything where you know that you're guaranteed gonna sell more than one, those are the products that make you money. So yes, you can focus on, you know, just the single names and the monograms, but where you're gonna make the most of your money is selling the labels and the bulk things and even classroom things. Um, I noticed those did really well when people were ordering things for their classroom because so they're, they're gonna get more than one. But pantry labels were a big one. So let's go ahead and make some labels together. All right, I have all of my labels ready. I actually I have um, three different flours I use mostly for baking. I have my bread flour, my self rising, and then all purpose. And I did not have labels on them. So it was getting a little confusing as to which was which. So those are the labels we're gonna be making today. And some tip for you guys if you're doing labels is I would always sell them. I think it was like a standard four inches wide, I think. I'm pretty sure I'll have to go back and look. But if I was to do like, okay, a max of four inches wide, if they order multiple, I would make sure that they were okay with them all being the same height. So they all look you know, kind of similar. So for example, this one is, you know, four inches wide, obviously, but if I made my bread flour four inches wide, it looks a lot bigger. So your customer might not be happy with that. They might want all of them to look kind of similar. So say somewhere in your description that they're, the max width is gonna be four inches, but the others might vary just because it'll just look better. So this one is around 2.286. So I'm just gonna make sure that this one is also about 2.286. So they look similar in size. So these are all ready to go be cut and we're gonna just cut these on regular adhesive vinyl settings and you don't have to do anything else to it, but cut it and weed it and all that. So these are super basic, but all I did was just put transfer tape on them. I use R-Tape Clear Choice AT65, and I would send them to the customer exactly like this, along with some instructions on how to apply, and that's that, and it's as simple as that. So when I was selling my vinyl products back in the day, they didn't have a lot of the fun like puff vinyls and all those things um, back then. So I definitely, in my opinion now, think that HTV isn't necessarily the absolute best transfer that you can pick when it comes to shirts just within itself. Um, I think DTF and sublimation and all of those things are a little bit better because it's just easier and you don't have to take the time to weed and all the things. But what I would do if I was doing vinyl again is I would focus on more of the things that you can't get with those um, transfers. So like puff vinyl and the flock vinyl and all the cool vinyls that you can like make 3D and like just the cool shirts like that. So if it was me now, I would say an HTV shirt, but now that there's so many different things, we're gonna make a puff vinyl little pocket tee for my daughter for Easter. So that's what we're gonna be making in this video. It is definitely something that I would sell um, if I was doing vinyl products right now because I think it's really hot and trendy right now and it's really cute and fun. So we're gonna be making a cute little puff vinyl shirt today. All right, so we have our bunny ready. Now this is the um, puff vinyl, but what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that you do the same settings that you always do HTV by going to object, mirror, and flip horizontally. And that way you flip your, you know, HTV, you always wanna mirror. 
So that one's done and ready to be cut with our HTV setting. But when you're doing the puff vinyl, remember it is shiny side up. Normal HTV is shiny side down, but with the puff, it's shiny side up. All right, so we're gonna do our puff vinyl shirt. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is set your heat press to 280 degrees or around there. You're gonna wanna figure out depending on your press type, um, but you're gonna set it to firm pressure and we're gonna set our shirt out and we're gonna pre-press the area So if you're doing a pocket design, you're just gonna wanna look at the seam at the top and match it up with the armpit seam and just find a good middle point right there. You're gonna do sticky side down. Now we're gonna press it for eight seconds, firm pressure. And another thing I wanted to mention is if you're selling vinyl products, you don't have to limit yourself to only one thing. So if you really like making shirts, don't worry if you wanna sell vinyl decals along with it, or if you're just making vinyl decals, don't think that that's the only thing you have to sell. Because I think that expanding and being able to use the most out of your machine is a great way to kind of like maximize your visibility. Yes, it can get stressful if you're like me and decide to sell a ton of different things all at once that aren't just vinyl. Um, cause that can get you burned out really fast, but definitely just like sell, you know, figure out what you like to sell and test the waters out a little bit. There might be something that you're better at and that you sell well, um, along with other things that you have in your shop as well. And another thing is, is offering a variety of different cost items, maybe have some little filler prices in there. So things that are like a couple dollars and then stuff that's a little bit more, it will make customers usually tend to shop a little bit more when they have a variety of price points to choose. All right, so here's the product that really made me the majority of my income um, was the end of the year around Christmas time. Around, I guess, October-ish is when I would really start ramping up. So throughout the year, I made some pretty good, decent money. But like I said, my real sellers were around the holidays to so Christmas. So um, ornaments. Ornaments were a gigantic seller for me and it was mainly these. So these um, Hobby Lobby white ornaments. So you guys know the farmhouse style, still really popular. I, I'd say it's one of those things that people either love or hate. The clean white look with the cute Ray Dunn style skinny font. Um, Y'all, these, these literally, I had so many sleepless nights. I would be up all night crying because I was so tired and exhausted from weeding vinyl. I think that was what made me hate weeding vinyl so much was because of these ornaments. So people would buy like so many of these, like they would buy them in a set and I would sell the heck out of these, you guys. I still have overstock from when I sold these products and um, they did really well for me. So we're gonna be making my best seller ornaments today and I'll show you guys how these look. But if you guys are gonna do vinyl, Spend some time around Christmas time to make some vinyl ornaments because ornaments are a big seller no matter what you make. So like with my laser cut items, ornaments are always big as well too. But these were really good sellers. So let's go ahead and make some, some vinyl ornaments together. All right, we have our decal ready for our um, ornament. And I'm gonna show you some little tricks and ways to make it work really well um, for going on a curved surface. But um, the max height we can do is 1.2 inches tall. So that's what you're gonna wanna do when it comes to ornaments, at least that size ornaments. I think they're like two and a half round is 1.2 inches tall. And we have our little skinny font here. You can get a free font on DeFont called The Skinny. And then this one is called Apple Butter. It is from um, Design Bundles. Um, I'll link it down below, my favorite. She, she's one of my favorite designers. 
um, but she makes this font and it's commercial free if you get it on uh, design bundles. So that is the one we're going to be using for our ornament today. So as you see, all we did was put transfer tape on top. I use our tape Clear Choice AT65. And I'm gonna just take my scissors and I'm gonna cut small slits, not going all the way up, but just little slits all around the decal. And what that's gonna do is make it to where it's easy to apply onto our rounded edge, our rounded surface. Okay, so now I'm gonna take an alcohol swab. If I was doing a bunch of them, I would just use regular rubbing alcohol with a paper towel and clean my surface really well so that way my vinyl has something good to stick to. All right, so now I'm gonna take a little strip of fabric. Um, when I started doing the fabric like this, they sold really well. And I'm just gonna tie a little knot on the top of the ornaments. And that is exactly how I made my ornaments um, and I sold them like crazy. I even offered a couple of different colors of the ribbon on the top, but this buffalo check with the black and white was definitely the most popular. But this is how you make those ornaments. So those of you who've been here for a while probably know that I did a lot of wood signs with my vinyl machine as well. And that was obviously a bestseller for me. It was something I really enjoyed doing. And I made a lot of custom personalized signs. I don't have any projects planned for this video for that. Um, but I'm sure you guys have seen me do that so many times, make wood signs with them. So I just wanted to mention that that is something else that you can do with your vinyl machine. You can get stencil vinyl. I really like the Aura Mask and the Star Mask stencil vinyl. Those were two stencil vinyls that I use all the time. You you can also use vinyl and things like that as well, like the normal adhesive vinyl, but you basically just cut your stencil out, take the stencil, get transfer tape on top, and then apply that to your finished wood sign, and then you can paint over it. I really like the spray paint method. It is something that I started using more towards the end, and then you have a finished sign custom to however you would like. Those did really well. All the custom signs did extremely well for me, and that was something that really sparked my interest for woodworking. So just know that that is something really cool that you can make with your vinyl machine as well, and something that did really well for me um, when it comes to money and bestsellers and things like that. All right, y'all, so here is everything done. I know that these seem super basic, but this is just to show you that these are things that sold really well for me, but if you're able to think and find what's trendy and be able to make products based off of that, you could do really well with vinyl. So any kind of drinkware, um, know that holograph vinyl does really well on many products. So drinkware was one of those things that worked really well for me and I made thousands and thousands a month selling products with that. So that is something that works well. Labels, you can do so many different types of labels, but just keep in mind, do things that come in sets so you can make more profit from your vinyl. Vinyl is super low cost, so you can make a good profit being able to sell things that people buy multiple of. These popsicle koozies, you know, you could do so many different things. You can personalize so many different items with vinyl, but it was a cheap item to make that people really like because it's handy, it works well, and it was something that sold really well for me. The puff vinyl shirts, obviously I wasn't able to sell puff vinyl back in the day when I was doing this because I don't think it was around, um, but instead of doing you know, just regular flat HTV, find different ways to stand out and do fun vinyl that people will think is cute and adorable, and of course, that is so cute. I mean, who wouldn't want a puff bunny on their shirt? I would. And then ornaments. You could do so many different types of ornaments. This is just what was trendy and popular and what worked well when I was selling these. And they sold well for, I think, four years in a row doing this exact same style. So if you find something that works, keep working off of that and know that ornaments do very well. And you can personalize a lot of different vinyl things with ornaments. So yeah, you guys. That was so much fun, you guys. It was like a trip down memory lane because I used to sell so many different vinyl products and I did really well doing them. And I will say, I think what burned me out the most when I was doing it was because I started 
doing sublimation on top of vinyl and then also selling the laser cut items and I was selling so many different products in my shop that it was overwhelming for me. So I knew I had to cut some things out if I wanted to be sane again basically. And um, so that's why I decided to cut the vinyl out just because I found more of a love for the wood cutting, the wood cutting for the laser cut items and all of that. But if I was to do it again, I would still do it all the same. And I think like I said, vinyl, there's so many different things that you can do and make and sell. And I did really well selling those vinyl products. And so if you're looking for a way to make some extra money or you're wanting to start a business, don't cut out vinyl as not being an option because like I said, it works really well for me and it can work well for a lot of people. So I hope that you guys got some inspiration from this video. I know my products aren't that unique that I was selling, but they did well because I did a lot of research and work marketing them correctly and taking good photos and um, I think I got into it at a really good time too, so it worked really well and I think it could still work really well if you put the work into it. So. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that you learned something. And if you did like this style video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.